Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. Let's talk about the hidden program monitor editing mode in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, many, many years ago, to help Final Cut Pro 7 users move over to Premiere Pro, Adobe borrowed a feature that Final Cut had, and that's dragging to the program monitor. And I just happen to know that after reading a ton of, to, of uh, people's comments is a lot of people don't know this exists. And if you're an avid user, you would probably not even think about this or even want it because you're such a keyboard maestro. A lot of avid users are masters at doing what I'm about to do even faster and uh, more accurate with the keyboard. And, and Premiere Pro can do all of those same kinds of keyboard shortcuts that the Avid users would use. So let's talk about what this is. And I wanna guarantee at the end, even if you know about this, I guarantee at the end, I'm gonna show you one thing you didn't know. All right, what is this? Let's go have a look. So I've colored my timeline specifically, I've got uh, a clip in blue, a clip in magenta, and a clip over here I'm going to insert that once I take it into the timeline, it's going to be mango color. So I wanted to make sure you could easily see where things are lining up. What's also important to understand is this is source patching. This is track targeting. You'll notice that when I click on this clip, V1 shows up. When I click on this clip, V1 and A1 show up because this has both audio and video. This setting will tell Premiere Pro where to put the clip before you drag it in. You're patching the source in. So if you want something in on V3 and you've normally been dragging it into V1 then dragging it up to V3, if you patch to V3, it'll go to V3. Same with audio and you can have V3 and A12 that stuff goes into. Okay, and you can set up keyboard shortcuts for that and shortcuts and all of that. So let's see how we're going to work with this. I'm gonna leave this on, on V1 and instead of dragging it over here, which a lot of people would do to insert that in there, is if you drag it over to the program monitor, you'll get an overlay. And there are several choices. The first one being insert before. So you'll notice the playhead is in the middle of the blue clip. When I let go, it moves the blue clip down. It didn't cut the blue clip. It moved it down and inserted it before. That's one useful thing. You can also insert after. So if I choose to insert after, because the playhead is on the blue clip, it's going to insert it after that and move it down. If the playhead was here and we inserted after, it's now gonna drop it in after. Okay, no problem. Let's put the playhead back on the blue, drag it up, and let's look at overlay. So when I choose overlay, even though I had source patching in V1, it does stick it on an overlay above there. The insert, mind you, will insert based on where that is. So insert puts the clip in and moves everything down. Replace, replaces the clip and you notice this cross section in here. What replace did was it kept the duration of the old clip because that tends to be more critical to your timeline. You don't want things snapping all over the place. So it leaves that, that space. You can drag that back if you want. So if you drag that back, then you'll see we're now at the, the correct size. If the playhead was over top of this one and we replace, there's enough media there that it, it replaced the whole clip. And you'll notice that if I have V1 selected and I try to replace, it doesn't work. So with the wrong source patching, dragging to that program monitor won't work. So we have to go and put that back on V1 because both of these, insert and overwrite, are controlling what's going on here. So if this clip was up here and we wanted to overwrite, it's going to overwrite in there. So you have to make sure you have the right clip set. Now, if this clip was already in here and we had our, our 
playhead over here, you can still drag insert before. So it just moved that clip, it copied that clip and placed it over in that section. Now, one other thing about replace, I have the, the I have the playhead over this, and when I choose replace, it's going to place it here. If I have this clip selected and choose replace, it's going to replace what is selected. So that takes priority, but not overwrite. Overwrite will position it where the playhead was and overwrite that information, okay? If you have a clip in the source monitor with in and out points, you can also drag that to the program monitor. Pretty easy. I mean, for most dragging editors, it's great. But here's the one thing I guarantee you didn't know. Check this out. I'm going to go all the way down to my media browser. I'll drag from the media browser into the program monitor. It will import the media. and insert the file directly inside there. All right, there you go. There's your hidden program monitor editing mode. For those mouse-driven editors, maybe this is the kind of thing that you really like. By the way, all the videos in this tutorial were provided by Adobe Stock, the premier supplier of stock images, video, motion graphics, templates, illustrations, and 3D objects. Find the perfect asset, for your next creative project. All right, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative and you're new to editing and this is your new mode, take a moment to subscribe. You want to support us a little bit more, we're making it easy through PayPal. You can use a credit card, debit card, monthly donation or one-time donation. There's a link in the description, one at the front of the page to, for you to support us here and we love all of our PayPal supporters. Thank you so much. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and I'm here to make you look good and find all these hitting editing modes. That's hard to say. Hidden editing modes.